You're 1.2 miles, 10 right on High Point Road, recalculating. Who has not heard words similar to these? Even if you don't personally own a GPS, you have probably heard something similar. GPSs have become so common that they are even used in commercials. Who has to see the nationwide commercial where the GPS says, Turn right now, and the man drives directly into a storefront? The term GPS means Global Positioning System. Today, you find GPSs as small, handheld mobile devices or as built-in options on most new vehicles, and now it is even a standard option on smartphones. Most people never worry anymore about having, getting lost. I use a GPS daily. As a FedEx delivery driver, it helps me find locations for picking up and delivering packages. Today, I will relate the fascinating history of the GPS technology, how the GPS actually works, and how the GPS became a common household electronic. First, let's look at the fascinating development of the science behind these little direction-giving devices. What might be surprising to most people is to find out that we owe our garments and tom-toms to the Cold War. In 1957, Russia sent the first satellite up into orbit. The U.S. did not have the ability to keep track of it. A naval research laboratory physicist named Roger Easton proposed an idea of using synchronized clocks in satellites in a surveillance system. He was building on an idea of Dr. Ivan Gettings that used a three-dimensional time difference of arrival position finding system. The Department of Defense approved this idea. Thirteen billion dollars went into developing the network of satellites that would make GPS possible, according to the aerospace website. That's a lot of money. But exactly what does a three-dimensional time difference of arrival position finding system mean? A good explanation can be found at the website at aero.org. First, for the system to work, the GPS receiver must receive signals from at least three different satellites. That is why it is called a three-dimensional system. The more satellites involved in the calculation, the more accurate the information will be. All satellites have clocks set to exactly the same time. That was a critical part of Dr. Easton's proposal. Atomic clocks made that possible. Atomic clocks are accurate within 50 nanoseconds. That becomes mind-boggling when you realize that a nanosecond is one billionth of a second. Each satellite knows its position from the data being sent to it from the system controller. Each satellite sends out signals transmitting its position in time. The device you have in your car or holding your hand is actually a receiver. This receiver takes the signals and calculates the distance to each satellite and adjusts for the time it took each signal to travel from each satellite. In math classes, remember the problems where the side of a triangle was given and the side of one size of one angle and you had to figure out the other sides? Well, the GPS is doing something a little similar to that, but on a much more complicated level. It is important for all the satellites to be on the exact time so that the distances can be accurately figured. When you are traveling in your car, the GPS continually receives signals and uses the changing information that it is receiving from the satellites to calculate how fast you are moving. So how did this system of satellites make handheld and vehicle GPS receivers so commonplace? We have become so used to these little direction helpers, but they are actually a pretty new piece of technology. Once the Department of Defense began researching this new idea for surveillance, it still took years to bring the idea into existence. The first GPS satellite wasn't even launched until 1978. To be fully functional and accurate, the system requires 24 satellites orbiting the Earth in very precise locations. In 1983, as a result of the Korean War civilian airliner being shot down by the Russians, President Reagan declassified the technology behind the GPS and allowed it to be used by civilians. Still, the complete system of satellites were not yet operational, and the Department of Defense required civilian GPSs to have selective availability 
or SA for short, built in. This was a built in error that kept the GPS from being too accurate. The receiver with SA could pinpoint within 100 yards of a location. The government required SA because they thought it would be keep enemies from using GPS against us. Media coverage of the Gulf War in 1991 highlighted the accuracy in uses of GPS. In 1994, the 24th Necessary Satellite was launched and the Global Positioning System was declared 100% operational. When SA was removed in May of 2000, the explosion of personal GPS receivers began. Mass marketing began in 2003. Garmin, a recognized leader in the world of GPSs, produced their first GPS in 1990. In 1991, they produced the first one. As an interesting piece of information, the company named Garmin comes from the two, the two names of the man who founded the company, Gary Burrell and Min Kao. Today, GPS receivers are preloaded with information in maps of latitude longitude points. With SA removed, the devices are accurate to within 10 yards. Although we take the mobile GPS receiver devices for granted today, these little communication helpers have only been around for less than 10 years. But the development of our direction helpers began over 50 years ago. The need to protect our country during the Cold Wars ultimately gave us the ability to find a new friend's house by the shortest route. 24 orbiting satellites send continual information to millions of receivers. GPS has become an acceptable feature in cars as well as phones. It is no longer a technological wonder used just for defense. So the next time you need directions to the closest Chick-fil-A, you can just thank the Russians for sending up a satellite.